Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a uh, Tuesday night, December 23rd, 2025, 9.09 p.m. California time here. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.3 across the uh, California region. Also notice that four-pointer well inland, a ways away from the plate boundary, but I believe we're starting to uh, see some you know, pretty significant stress out here along the Cascadia and the plate boundary itself. When things are amplified and stressed and um, you know maximum pressurization is happening, we see these inland earthquakes take place. And we got a four-pointer out there in northern Nevada earlier this evening. Uh, nothing else coming up or nothing else following that four-pointer. But remember, oh, it was a couple months back here, we had a big earthquake swarm stir up here uh, out of the blue with really no main quake. Uh, just a bunch of twos and threes. I think we even had a couple fours in there as well. I believe there's also some um, mining operations out here. We're very close to this area. I noticed there's uh, what looks like some... Um, those could be... Um, almost look like pumping operations out there. Uh, but there's definitely some mining operations out here. Outside of the uh, Midas area near Valmy, Nevada. That swarm stopped uh, for a little while, but it may stir back up here. Either way, a four-pointer coming in today. Uh, not so much going on over here across Northern California for now. In fact, uh, nothing uh, aside from this earthquake uh, this morning, a 2.3 down into the Cascadia subduction zone, where the tremor activity has come to a halt once again. This uh, was not quiet yesterday. In fact, uh, if we look, let me go back here to um, the time period of yesterday's. You'll see that we had a pretty decent uptick, 159 epicenters of slow slip events there underneath the um, Cascade, underneath the Oregon area that's associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. But that has halted because there's nothing else coming in there today. Really no earthquake activity either, but um, definitely some interesting uh, activity when it comes up out of the blue and then it stops out of the blue as well. Uh, Washington area, not so much going on up there. There's a couple smaller microquakes, but I don't really see anything major. Uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay region, nothing new to report this afternoon. Uh, these earthquakes here from earlier this morning. The San Ramon area is starting to back off there for earthquake activity, but don't let your guard down. They, these swarms come and go and eventually Eventually, one of these times, we're going to see a bigger event out here. Uh, Southern California got a lot of rain coming up here. Eight to nine inches of rain up above Los Angeles here in the uh, uh, Santa Monica Mountains. And uh, these guys are going to get a whopper of a system coming up here. We'll take a look at that weather in a little bit. But uh, for now, just some uh, general small microquake activity out there. A couple twos this morning uh, throughout California. But uh, as you can see here on the map, just some generally small microquake activity outside of Newport Beach it looks like a little 1.4 uh, looking up into Yellowstone area we're starting to get a little trail out here once again from the Garlock Fault shear zone all the way up through Utah and it stretches around these mountain ranges here that normally uh, you know we get a lot of this buildup because of the interaction of the plate boundary out here a lot of stress seems to be transferring inland right now uh, Yellowstone, a couple smaller earthquakes out there. Uh, looks like within the Yellowstone caldera and also south here. So let's go see what we got for the uh, Yellowstone uh, activity real quick. Check out this seismograph station here. There's, uh, there's a couple smaller events there throughout the day. Nothing big. When was that? At 1419. 14, 19. It may not even show up on this graph. That was more kind of down around this area. 1419? No, that's 1445. But uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot happening there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, the rest of the country, pretty active out in the oil fields of Texas. Really nothing new to report across the uh, eastern portion of the country. Hawaii out here is swarming a little bit. Got some deeper activity underneath the Pahala area once again. These earthquakes are relatively deep down there, about 15 to 20 miles deep. 
We should be getting close here to seeing another eruption across Kilauea Volcano, so let's go check that out real quick before I end up doing a full loop around the Pacific and forgetting about Hawaii. I don't want to do that. Uh, let's take, out, uh, take a look here at the deformation data real quick. As you can see, uh, we're going up here, and we're at the level seen previous to the last eruption back in uh, earlier this month. So we've accumulated quite a bit of volume of magma. Let's go see what we got there across the uh, webcams up at the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, I heard there were some overflows going on, and that's what looks like it's going on. There's some overspill, overflow. I don't believe we're into full eruption yet, but we're getting very close. This is one of the latest imagery uh, shots here of Kilauea Volcano. Uh, latest update shows that uh, there's some overflow at the south vent. Uh, looks like it's extending about 100 feet or so from that vent. North vent continues uh, spattering with large flames of burning hydrogen. Not something you want to be close to. Uh, so we're getting close to the eruption. I think we may see this by morning. Uh, so we'll check back on that in the morning time. But yeah, getting, uh, getting another eruption going there. Kilauea Volcano. Rinse and repeat cycle. As far as uh, newer activity goes here, look down south. Down across the Vanuatu area, Kermadec Trench. Nothing going on across New Zealand. It's kind of stuck down here right now. we got a swarm of activity in the deeper areas of the subduction zones. Look at all those earthquakes that are just raised off the globe here. Almost all of them today. A couple really deep ones as well. So watch this region closely. Those deeper earthquakes can definitely get uh, the stress going up at the uh, subduction zone levels where the... The, uh, most of the strain builds up, you know, for large earthquake activity. I do expect that to potentially uh, could work its way down here across New Zealand. New Zealand's been a little quiet, maybe a little bit too quiet here recently. Uh, some activity around the Indonesia area as well. Typical clustering going on there. Um, let's see, Andaman Sea area, 4.8. That's fairly new. Looks like it's just off the plate boundary there. Uh, not a whole lot going on there across Japan for now. A lot of older activity. There's that super deep earthquake into the Izu Trench. We do have some further activity back behind Japan here. Looks like that's stirred up uh, maybe behind Section E here. You can see it on the uh, Earthquake 3D Globe. Little 3.7. Nothing big. And uh, nothing new to report across the Kamchatka area. There's a couple earthquakes there from this morning. Pretty good cluster. Uh, last one was a 4.6 there around noontime or so. Alaska, a little 1.8. Nothing big happening up there for now. Uh, the rest of the planet here, just typical movement across the Middle America Trench. Puerto Rico as well, nothing major going on there. And the uh, Peru Chile Trench down here. Got uh, some threes and fours, but nothing major happening. The rest of the globe here, a couple earthquakes in the rip boundaries out here, it looks like. 4.4 and a 4.2. Aside from that, uh, let's see what's going on. Look at all that deep activity, though. That's crazy. It's been a while since I've seen that much deep activity in one location. All right, let's check out space weather activity, see what we got going on here on the sun. Uh, elevated solar wind right now. It's up above 700 and that, uh, let's see what it's doing for the auroras a little bit. Not so much coming in here. Maybe a chance seen up in the Alaska and Canada area. Uh, but really not expecting much here. Just a little bit of high-speed solar wind stream flowing in. Now, as far as flaring activity goes, we do have an active area, a couple active areas facing the planet, but really not too concerned with them right now. There's a massive area back across the eastern side, eastern limb of the sun, that's not quite uh, viewable yet, uh, but we're starting to see some signs that it is active. It's it's basically that sunspot that was out here weeks ago that was literally probably about as big as this area that I'm circling on the sun. It was literally that big, a very large complex group of sunspots, and it really never did anything. Uh, but it's coming back around the bend. Looks a little bit shorter, but it looks a little bit rounder out there in terms of coverage area. Uh, but we'll check on that as it gets a little bit closer. Uh, for now, uh, I guess one sunspot area of interest is going to be this one down here. Got uh, quite a bit of complexity within 
uh, this little core of that sunspot, but uh, really not expecting anything major for now uh, as far as any, you know, strong solar flares. Got 30% chance there for about an M flare, X flare around 5% chance or so. And as you can see, it's been pretty neutral, just hovering around the B and C flare category here over the last couple days. So we'll just kind of, you know, keep an eye on that and see how things go. Um, seven day forecast here for the West Coast. Take a look at that, man. Some of these mountain ranges up here above Los Angeles and Southern California looks like they could get 10 inches of rain uh, over the next seven days. This is a seven day quantitative precipitation forecast. And after this, you know, series of storms coming up Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, there's going to be a cutoff low that swoops back up into Southern California, adding on to that total. So this is a pretty significant event. Uh, for Southern California and California in general as this bomb bomb cyclone develops and intensifies just off the Northern California coastline. Let me show you guys the uh, wind out here. you are just starting to get windy here in my neck of the woods right now, but it's starting to develop. It may not look like much, but look at this area of circulation. Uh, this will rapidly develop here overnight and this morning. And... Um, pretty much develop into a, a decent sized low pressure system bringing with it quite a bit of rain some strong winds as well across the uh, northern california region we're underneath a high wind warning uh, here around chico and the sacramento valley uh, probably get around 50 miles an hour or so could be up around higher around 60 or so uh, but either way that's going to be a decent uh, precipitation maker and uh, you know more than likely there's going to be some power outages and then we got another system coming behind that, a rapidly developing low pressure system as well, around Christmas time or so, Christmas Day. Uh, just getting slammed out here. I know I've seen a couple comments saying that uh, you know I've been been complaining about not getting rain here all December, and I'm getting my wish. <laughs> yes, I am. Luckily for us out here, you know, there's there's definitely going to be some flooding issues in the typical regions, but our reservoirs are filling up, and that is good news here. Uh, we still got quite a bit of room out there in the numerous reservoirs that can handle uh, the runoff and whatnot. So that will, you know, definitely help us out there uh, for rain, you know, as far as having a, a sufficient uh, water season. I'm go over here to the uh, southwestern map here of California. Put that into motion. Man, look at that atmospheric river. Just going to get cranked up here over Los Angeles area, Southern California. That's a kind of a big deal down there. Not often do they get stuff like that, and that's going to be a whopper of a system. And then uh, a cutoff low swoops back up from the south, brings more moisture in as we head towards the um, um, next week or so, middle of next week. But the systems out here, it does look like we'll continue to stay wet for the most part as we enter into the uh, 2026 year. This is a GFS model run here until the 9th of January. Uh, Chico area should pick up another 4 to 5 inches of rain uh, here coming up through this time period. And again, as you can see down here in Southern California and the Sierra Nevada Mountains, quite a bit of rain and quite a bit of snow up there above 5,000 feet or so. Uh, most of the storms that we've had here recently have been pretty warm with that tropical uh, moisture coming in keeping the snow levels up around 8,000 feet or so, but that's not going to be the story here um, for too much longer. We're going to get some colder air in, bringing that snow level down, and we're talking about snow in the feet range up here. Quite a bit of feet of snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains there, and that's just, this only goes to the 26 here. Um, if we were to go back and look at the previous model run, put this into motion, and uh, yeah, feet feet and feet of snow. 72 inches, 82 inches there. You know, that's taller than I am. We, we're looking at it quite a bit uh, here over the next week and a half or so of snow falling, which is good because there's not a whole lot up in the mountains right now. As uh, far as a long-term outlook here, let's see what the Climate Prediction Center here has for us. Um, eight, six to ten day forecast there. It looks to be well above normal precipitation for Southern California, Arizona, and Nevada area. That's a six to 10 day, eight to 14 day. The West Coast stays uh, quite wet out here. Uh, weeks three to four, that's a little down the road here. This could change, but uh, near term, 
far as uh, you know, entering into the first week here of January, looks quite wet out here for the uh, California region. And of course, we got these. Um, that's an eight to fourteen day hazard. Um, yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of rain coming in here for sure. All right, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on here, folks. I think that's about it for now. Uh, just be on guard. Have a good night. Just be on, you know, stay vigilant. Keep your eyes open. Earthquake activity can happen at any time here. Christmas Eve tomorrow, Christmas Day the next day. Got uh, some important dates coming up here. We'll see how things play out. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We'll see you guys back out here for the... Uh, Wednesday morning update, Christmas Eve update uh, in the morning time. Have a good night. Stay safe out there.